where this uh, concept for the film came from. Well, I always love the idea of making kind of an odd love triangle film. Um, and I love the idea that you could make a movie that has all the fun and hijinks of like, remember the show Three's Company, you know, and, and do that, but also do it in a more emotional way that has like an emotionally rooted version of that, you know. So my character has recently lost his brother and Marie's character is going through a terrible breakup. Emily Blunt's character has her own baggage, which you come to find out in the film. And um, you put all three of them in a house together and, and kind of see what happens. Three in the morning, and you're drinking by yourself. What's going on? Without giving too much away, the end of this film, we're left a little bit open. Uh, where did that concept come from, and how did you decide that that was the way you wanted to leave it? It's something I've always appreciated in films. I love being, I love being cast off into the abyss and trying to figure out what happened to these people after the movie's over. And this was the ending that Lynn always wanted, but we were never sure we could pull it off. Um, and so, you know, it's just my belief that it's okay to not know exactly what's going to work. I think if you admit that as a filmmaker, it doesn't make you weak. <laughs> it just means that you're open to, you know, letting your audiences tell you a little bit about what, what they want to see. Dad! What are you doing here? What? Did you get my sis up and wanted you to meet I did. Me? We met last night. I know. It's crazy. How, what, why are you, what, how did the, what are you doing here? Lynn and I were just doing the director's commentary and we were just thinking like, okay, we've done two. There's probably a third one, at the least, coming up. Um, and we have a really great little working relationship. You know, I think that there's something about the alchemy of two people that's unknowable, and why does it work, or, or why doesn't it? And we really, not only do I think we make good stuff together, we just really like each other and like working together. So, I'm, you know, I'm hopeful we'll find something else. You have some of the big, more mainstream products mm -hmm. and a lot of the indie cred. Is this a very conscious decision when you're planning out what you want to work on? It's not a conscious decision to do either big or small movies. It's really all about where do I want to go? What's the best content? You know, where, what's the best script? Um, and, and in my experience, you can't really choose a lot of the, the bigger budget stuff that have to choose you, you know? <laughs> yeah. So right now I'm lucky enough to be in a place in my career where like, as a writer and a director and sometimes as an actor, I get to do bigger things. That may not always be the case, which, you know, is okay with me to a certain degree. I think everybody has their little moments, you know, they, they ride in Hollywood for a few years and then Hollywood kicks them out for a little bit and then they come back and <laughs> I'm just really glad I know how to make cheap movies. So that means I'll always be, I guess, in business to a certain degree. Do you know how the IRS dating scheme works these days? She doesn't need to know. Okay, this, this is basically how it works. I mean, in a nutshell. So they come in with the skinny jeans. They, yes, skinnier than these, by the way. Oh. Then we've got the rocker stud belt, converse, no socks, tongue <laughs> open, no shoelaces, the swoopy haircut. Which you over. have right now, by well, the way. Well, I, I have it because I have hair problems. These guys, are, <laughs> these guys are young enough, they should not be swooping.